breaking new details on that Las Vegas massacre. What we're now learning about those four and a half minutes of terror. I don't know where to go. Oh my God. And the incredible acts of heroism. The nurse giving up his life to save his wife. And new images emerging of the victims. The special education teacher, military veteran, and so many more taken too soon. Plus the concert goers and officers who ran into the line of fire to save lives. Plus the incredible survival story of twin sisters and the search for a motive. The mystery around the gunman this morning, police raid his home, the astonishing arsenal of rifles and explosives found inside, new details about his life in Las Vegas, and the questions now surrounding his longtime girlfriend. Well, I'm and celebrating an American original, rock legend Tom Petty passing away overnight just days after his final concert. This morning, tributes pouring in from around the world. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And we do say good morning, America. And as you can imagine, a lot to get to on this Tuesday morning. Here is a live look at Las Vegas. Still so many questions about how and why that tragic shooting happened. What a staggering death toll, 59, at least 59 people killed, more than 520 injured. The victims were just there to enjoy the concert on Sunday night. Now the entire city, the entire country reeling. Look at the cover of the Las Vegas newspaper. Unimaginable, so, so true. And all over the country, people are paying their, paying their respects Honoring the lives of those lost, and take a look at the, at the Las Vegas Strip, usually so bright, but last night turned off all the lights and it went dark. World News Tonight anchor David Muir is leading us off this morning. He's there in Las Vegas. Good morning, David. Robin, good morning, and it's almost impossible to wrap your head around that number you just mentioned. 59 people were killed in this attack. There are hundreds of patients at hospitals throughout Las Vegas, and this morning we know more about the discovery made on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay in the hotel room of Stephen Paddock. We know 23 firearms were pulled from that room, another 19 firearms at his home. The total, 42 weapons. Investigators this morning trying to answer that question, why? Overnight, new details inside those four minutes of terror. That's just a firefighter. Huh? I know, but why would you do that? 10.08 p.m. Sunday, a hail of gunfire unleashed on a crowd of 22,000 country music fans attending a Jason Aldean concert. The bullets coming from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel. We have an active shooter. We have an active shooter inside the warehouse. Concert goers telling us they sought shelter anywhere they could to escape the gunfire. The suspect was relentless. There were pauses in the gunfire when people would stand back up and make a run for it, and then another round would begin. Yes, that was probably the most terrifying part, was honestly just thinking that it was over. And you think, okay, we're okay to stand up, and then it's quite, it was quite what it felt like for a while, and then you'd go to kind of crouch up and go low, and it would just start all over again. 1120 Sunday night, outside room 135, SWAT teams now closing in on the shooter identified as 64-year-old Stephen Paddock. Hotel fire alarms going off from the intense gunfire smoke, giving away his location. Authorities say Paddock checked into the hotel last Thursday. Everyone in the hallway needs to move back. All units move back. Breach, breach, breach. The suspect dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. In his hotel suite, 23 firearms. Police say he acted alone. The 527 wounded carried out by wheelbarrow, pickup truck, even barricades turned into stretchers. 59 others killed in what is now the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. In the aftermath, an open field, now a crime scene strewn with debris. Reports that cell phones left behind rang for hours as loved ones desperately tried to reach their relatives. And among those who lost their lives, 29-year-old Sonny Melton, a registered nurse from Tennessee, who died while shielding his wife Heather, a surgeon, with his own body. 35-year-old mother of three, Hannah Allers, seen here just before the concert began. It's okay to mourn those you love. 34-year-old Las Vegas police officer, Charleston Hartfield, off duty at the time, a military veteran and father who was killed while helping others to safety. His family and friends holding a vigil to honor his bravery. We all have tough days, hard days, but we have 
have to get through it and we have to keep moving forward. And amid such tragedy come the stories of heroism. Jonathan David Smith credited with saving more than 20 lives when he broke down a security gate and formed a human chain to lead others to safety off the field. And I ran back towards the shooting. Um, and there was one lady that was on the ground. I basically helped her up and um, just told her just, just to run. I basically just told her we gotta go. She didn't wanna move. Um, at that point, um, more shots rang out. I proceeded to go with uh, the two gentlemen carrying the lady to look for paramedics at that point. Jonathan also said there was an off-duty officer who helped him taking the shirt off of his back and using it as a tourniquet. He said the bullet is still lodged in his neck. Doctors did not want to take it out, fearful they would do more damage. And Robin, there's a trauma surgeon here in Las Vegas who said uh, overnight that he treated so many people, he didn't know their names, he didn't know who they were, they were just bringing bodies in. And he said one thing was uniform about them all. He said this wasn't some ordinary street weapon, the kind of ammunition used did maximum damage inside all of these people mm -hmm. who were rushed into ERs throughout Las Vegas. David, we're going to talk more about that and get back to you in a moment. Thank you. And we are learning new details about the gunman, but his motive remains a mystery. No message, no warning signs have surfaced so far. His neighbors surprised, his brother shocked. Our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, here with the latest on what we know and what we don't know. Good morning, Brian. That's right, George, and good morning. Authorities this morning say they very much need to talk with the longtime girlfriend of the shooter, hoping she will answer some key questions about what Stephen Paddock was up to in the last few months as he acquired this massive arsenal and, ABC News learned, has sent huge amounts of money to someone overseas. When police rented Paddock's home in a retirement community in Mesquite, Nevada, they found even more evidence of his secret attack plans. In excess of 18 additional firearms, um, some explosives, and several thousand rounds of ammo, along with some electronic devices that we are evaluating at this point. But they did not find girlfriend Mary Lou Danley, a one-time casino hostess for high rollers, who later in the day was located in Asia. The sheriff says his officers continued to investigate what, if anything, she knew about her boyfriend's plans. We are continuing the investigation into that female. Um, there are several questions that need to be answered. Authorities say they also want to know what she knows about tens of thousands of dollars Paddock has been sending to someone in the Philippines. She is currently out of the country. Uh, we are making arrangements to contact her upon her return. So far, the motive behind the man who became the face of evil remains a mystery. His brother describes him as a divorced multimillionaire with no children, whose only passion was gambling, a regular at Vegas casinos. He was a wealthy guy, and he liked to play video poker. He played like multi-hundred dollar a hand video poker. His family remembers him as a man who grew up without conviction. Steve had nothing to do with any political organization, religious organization, no white supremacists, nothing. His only encounter with the courts came six years ago, as seen in this video, after he slipped on the floor of a Las Vegas casino and sued for damages. Despite Paddock's efforts to claim painful injuries, an arbitrator ruled in favor of the casino. Our descriptions of him were that he was slovenly, which he appeared to be on the video initially, he was carrying a beer in a, in a paper bag. What we saw from the tape was a man who was probably drunk. And the only known connection to crime was Paddock's late father, a violent bank robber who spent seven years in the 1960s on the FBI's most wanted list, described as psychopathic, suicidal, armed, and dangerous. As for that girlfriend, authorities tell ABC News she's expected back in the country sometime this week as the number and the seriousness of the questions for her continues to grow. Well, one of them being uh, neighbors had seen them together just two weeks ago. That's right. We believe she left, for, left out of the country about one week ago for and, reasons we don't know. And we also know she had a social media account, but so far no social media for Paddock? Nothing we can find of Paddock at all, George. Okay, Brian Ross, thanks very much. And George, it is becoming clear the shooter was stockpiling those weapons, firearms, ammunition, even explosives. Our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, is in Washington with new details on what investigators have discovered. Good morning, Pierre. Robin, good morning. The evidence is mounting and it's truly chilling. The suspect had amassed an extraordinary arsenal of lethal weapons. 
Sources tell ABC News a suspect was ready to go to war. Armed with 23 handguns and rifles, one of them an assault rifle modified to fire like a machine gun, unlike any weapon used in recent mass casualty shootings. We have multiple firearms up here. Take a look at videos like this that show how an assault rifle can be modified to fire much more quickly. Before, after. ABC News has learned some of the rifles were high-powered, go, go, go. capable of slicing through police body armor. This is a classic uh, WMD. This is a, uh, a weapon and a man of mass destruction. We examined the first 90 seconds of the massacre, <laughs> hearing nearly 200 rounds fired. Hundreds more within the following minutes. The killer firing from more than 300 feet above. Floor 32, with the crowd more than 1,000 feet away. Apparently not a lot of skill required. Police and the FBI this morning trying to trace the guns, going to every store in the region. The gun store in Mesquite, Nevada, confirming that Panic purchased guns here. The store is saying he passed all necessary background checks. It's unknown if these were the guns used in the rampage. And something else disturbing. According to a law enforcement source, a camera was found in the hotel room, perhaps to record the shooter. And they also discovered materials used to make explosives in his car and his house, Robin. So very dark. Uh, despite all of these weapons, there's no indication that uh, investigators have been able to unveil that he was a, a, how do you say, expert marksman. Correct, Robin. Our experts are telling us there's so many people that were packed together in that crowd that the killing was so, so easy. All right. Thank you, Pierre. Michael. All right. Thank you, Robin. We have more now. On the race to save those hurt in the Las Vegas attack, Nevada has just one level one trauma center in that facility and the other hospitals in the area desperately trying to help hundreds of victims. Lindsay Davis is at the University Medical Center with more. Good morning, Lindsay. Hey, good morning, Michael. Just to give you some perspective on what the hospitals here have been dealing with at UMC, which is a hospital right behind me, just for an example, prior to last night, the total number of patients they'd ever received all at once was 17. Last night, they admitted a total of 104. This morning, a look inside the race to treat the injured. Las Vegas area hospitals working around the clock to help the hundreds of wounded. Desert Springs has no available beds right now. Medical personnel saying it's like nothing they've ever seen before. Uh, we've actually had a number of mass casualty incidents come through this uh, trauma center, but nothing of this magnitude. At Sunrise Medical Center, they admitted 180 patients. It was nonstop. It was, it was an impressive evening. Some, like 18-year-old Addison Short, awaiting surgery. Her lower leg fractured, a bullet still inside. I tried to get up, and my foot literally just felt like it was disconnected, like I just couldn't run. The college freshman says she's grateful for the stranger who helped pull her to safety. I really wish I knew who he was so I could thank him. Hospitals, including the ones here in Las Vegas, regularly train for mass casualty events. But does this compare with any kind of training? You know, our, our latest training, ironically, was uh, with an ER physician who was on duty at Orlando Regional Hospital the night uh, of the Pulse nightclub attack. He was here just a couple of months ago. Right, and that was so crucial because that physician that was on duty in Orlando the night of the, night, uh, the Pulse nightclub attack was able to share with them what worked and what they could have done more effectively. Michael. And, um, Lindy, we understand there's been an incredible outpouring of support as well. Yes, just for one example, the sheriff yesterday morning announced that there was going to be a GoFundMe page created for the victims. In seven hours, they raised a million dollars, Michael. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. All right, Lindsay Davis, thank you so much. And this tragedy is struck close to home for everyone here at, at Disney ABC. Our Disney CEO, Bob Iger, telling us this morning of the loss of Carrie Barnett, who was on the culinary team at Disneyland, and she had just celebrated 10 years working here. Iger called her death a senseless, senseless, horrific act and a terrible loss for so many. Our thoughts and prayers go out to her friends, her family, and they told us this morning they're proud that she worked here at Disney, and we were proud to have her as a member 
of our team. And we're also learning of another Disneyland employee, Jessica Millam, was also seriously injured in Vegas. And she is hospitalized this morning, and we're hoping for a speedy recovery for her and, of course, for all the others who were hurt in the yeah, sense of tragedy. we have to wrap our arms around all the victims and their families. Absolutely. President Trump led a moment of silence at the White House yesterday, ordered federal buildings to fly fags at half staff, and tomorrow he heads to Las Vegas after a trip to Puerto Rico today. Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, is already in San Juan. And, John, the president did lead that moment of silence, called for unity yesterday, but his team also tried to stop any debate about gun control before it begins. Uh, absolutely, George. This is a president that got elected by talking about his commitment to the Second Amendment, by talking about how good a friend he was of the NRA. So there have been calls from Democrats, uh, some very prominent calls from Democrats to look at gun control again, including Hillary Clinton uh, coming out with a tweet saying, our grief is not enough. We must stand up to the NRA. Uh, that is not a message that is, uh, that is being received well at the White House, not at all. The president goes to Puerto Rico today, Las Vegas tomorrow. Uh, he does. He's, got a, he's going to be several hours on the ground here in Puerto Rico getting a first-hand look uh, at, at the damage here. The White House has said that he is willing to meet uh, with the mayor of San Juan, who he has feuded with so publicly here, unclear if that meeting is going to happen. And as for the trip to, to Las Vegas, he's going to be meeting with first responders, with law enforcement, with the families of the victims. Uh, they say uh, he has said that he will be there uh, perhaps uh, more than a day. He may actually uh, be over there longer. Uh, that Las Vegas, of course, is a city that the president has ties to. He has, uh, he has properties there. Uh, he has spent uh, a fair amount of time in Las Vegas. And, and John, so many in the White House seemed shaken by this yesterday. Uh, they really did. If you looked, uh, George, uh, a rather emotional moment uh, during the White House briefing at the very beginning uh, from Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, talking about the bloodshed, talking about the victim, uh, reading a Bible verse and, and choking up with tears, uh, clearly shaken by this. This uh, can't help but, but, but shake you. I remember the, the reaction of Barack Obama and the White House staff uh, with the Newtown tragedy uh, looked, uh, you know, something similar to what we saw at the White House yesterday. Mm -hmm. And of course, it does immediately raise the questions: What do we do about it, John yeah. Carl? Thanks very much. That is the question, yes. George, and that's something that Jimmy Kimmel brought up last night. Did you see this moment? He is a Las Vegas native, and he made an emotional plea in the wake of that deadly shooting. Here's a look. Here we are again in the aftermath of another uh, terrible, inexplicable shocking and painful tragedy this time in las vegas which happens to be my hometown uh, of course we pray for the victims and for their families and friends and we wonder why even though there's probably no way to ever know why a human being would do something like this to other human beings who are at a concert having fun and listening to music Mm. Mm. echoing the sentiments of so many and he really took a big stand on gun control calling out uh, lawmakers who every time this happens and people say well it's not the right time to talk about it don't make it political and saying gosh I mean after Newtown after Orlando after what happened in Las Vegas when is the right time yeah. to discuss it and when they you, brought that up when you see the arsenal he had the kind of weapons he had That's how it. they were used it is just unbelievable. I mean, amassing that kind of Absolutely. arsenal. All right, let's get to Ginger now. And just west of Denver, guys, people were stuck on I-70 for hours because it had to shut down. Heavy, wet snow taking down power lines and trees in parts of Colorado, and there's more to come in Montana. That's uh, it for now, but we've got to get a check of your local weather in just 30 seconds. You owned your car for four years. You named it Brad. You loved Brad, and then you totaled him. You two had been through everything together. Two boyfriends, three jobs. You're like, nothing can replace Brad. Then Liberty Mutual calls, and you break into your happy dance. If you sign up for better car replacement, we'll pay for a car that's a model year newer with 15,000 fewer miles than your old one. Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Another morning with those temperatures in the 50s. A little cool out there for some of you, but with sunshine, we're going to warm nicely. Should hit the 60s by around 9 a.m. this morning. 71 at lunchtime today. 75, you're high again with ample sunshine across the area. It's quiet for the remainder of the work week with temperatures that will start topping out in the lower to mid 80s for the remainder of the work week and through the weekend. Great weather for playoffs that start on Friday. Next best chance of rain on Monday, Columbus Day.
Coming up, we're going to have much more from Las Vegas and incredible, those incredible acts of courage. We're going to hear from a bartender who jumped into action, risking her own life to help others. Every day, people are fighting type 2 diabetes with fitness, food, and the pill that starts with F. 